check this out. I have a new app that says it can teleport me anywhere. Um, <laughs> I think it's bullshit, but let's try it out. Because in this video, I wanted to show you Listen Island, so it would be really cool to go there right now. So it says just uh, press this button, put it in front of me on the table and just uh, wait a little bit. All right, so yeah, I just uh, did that. It doesn't really do anything. Oh, wait a second. This isn't listen. No, it looks like I'm still back at home in Haifung City. So I don't think it's going to work. So I'm just going to go back home and I can still show you listen island okay let's go back home so just gonna wait a little bit ah uh, okay Whew. Ah, what an experience i think um, this app is broken or something anyway the good thing is i've already been to listen island so i can show you in this video I'm going to give you five things, the five best things to do in Listen Island. So let's get started. The list is not in any particular order, by the way. So here we go. In Listen Island, you should check out the viewpoint on the mountain. A drone will give you the best views. But if you are on the island, you should definitely go up the mountain road to check out the views from there. There is a military area at the very top, so that's restricted. But there is a viewpoint tower just before that on the top of the cliffs. It's pretty high and you get nice views. Standing here on these rocks, on this cliff actually, yeah, it feels a little scary. Yeah, it seems to be a little dangerous because there's no railing, no fence. The view you get from here with the waterfall, with the flag tower and the on the beautiful white sandy beach with the water and the coral uh, reef and yeah the different shades of blue yeah you should definitely check out this spot actually all the viewpoints all the nice spots that are on a higher elevation are in the same area so yeah you have to check out this place when you are in listen island if you follow the road on the other side of the volcanic crater you get beautiful views over the garlic fields that's next to the mountain to the right hand side that's one of the spots where the water is the prettiest. There is no tower here, just a couple of rocks and the path you can walk on. But from here, you can check out the lake in the crater too. It's not that interesting when you are up close. The view over the island is better in my opinion. Number two, you should definitely check out the beach with the cave under the cliffs. The first viewpoint I mentioned is basically overlooking the cliffs that are behind this beach. It's called Hanka. It is a long beach. The prettiest part is in front of huge cliffs. I am in the cave of Listen Island. I mean, it's not an actual cave. It's more like a hole in the cliff, but yeah, actually that's what caves are. Today is Monday and I just wanted to mention this because Listen can have a lot of local tourists on the weekends but today is Monday and when I walk over to this beach to this cave there were about five or six people on the beach yeah that was like six minutes ago and there's literally nobody else right now it's empty I am alone on the beach This is such an awesome site and it's very unique. Uh, these like huge cliffs and volcanic rocks in front of the beach gives Listen Island a very unique feel that you can't really experience anywhere else in Vietnam. Number three, you must go on a boat trip to Dao Be Island. Seriously, if you go to Listen but you don't visit Dao Be, which is a tiny island just next to Listen, you are missing out big time. Daobe has the prettiest beach in my opinion and just the general vibe is awesome. There are no cars on Daobe, just a few motorbikes and basically one road that circles the whole island. It has beaches almost all around but there are some volcanic rocks that cut the long beach into smaller sections. One huge rock is particularly beautiful but even the beach that's next to the pier is amazing. There are some basic accommodation options on the main beach. I didn't really stay there, but I will one day. 
Adobe has garlic fields too, and I saw peanut fields as well. There are just a few people on the island, a few buildings, and you can drive around in probably like 10 minutes, but yeah, it's gonna take longer because you're going to stop at many spots for sure. The volcanic rocks with the palm trees look awesome on the island. My day on Dawa was so nice, I'm going to make a travel vlog about it. One video just about that day. So number four, back to Lisan. Riding a motorbike through Lisan Island should be on your list to do as well. I mean, okay, the motorbike is the most convenient way to go around, so this point might seem unnecessary, but still. If you have enough time, let's say two or three days, take an hour or two one day and just get lost. Uh, okay, you, you can't really get lost <laughs> in this sun, but my point is, just look around the villages, for example, you can find some cool temples. In Vietnam, especially on the countryside, a lot of families have a small temple next to their house and some of them are not that small. When you are driving around Lisan Island, you will come across a lot of these like Chinese style, very colorful temples. Some are really big, some just like this one are very small, but yeah, they are really pretty. So these are nice spots as well. Also, there is a building you should check out. I think it will be the new museum. It has two huge whale skeletons from old times. Whaling was part of the culture on islands like this in the past when whales were around. And in a lot of places they were worshipped as well. So I saw some other whale skeletons on other islands in Vietnam as well, but Lee Sen has the biggest one. There is an old museum too with a few old photos and artifacts, but it's just one building. It's basically one room with not much information in English. Still, you can take a quick look. Number five is try the local garlic and, and the seafood, so basically enjoy the food. In my previous video I mentioned food is one of the reasons to visit Lisan Island, so I must mention it here as well. Despite the size of the island, you can find a lot of well-known street food dishes here, but you should try one of the seafood restaurants as well, at least once. Lobster went for like 70 US dollars per kilo when I was there, so if you order the big ones like lobster or crabs, it can get pricey. Fish, scallops, oysters and other shellfish are relatively cheap though and everything is awesome. There is a really nice roasted garlic salad in most seafood restaurants. The garlic is small and kind of sweet, not really spicy, it's really interesting. This is one dish you can't really find elsewhere so don't miss it. In my opinion these are the best things to do in Lisan Island. If you have been to this awesome island and if you disagree with this list let me know in the comments below i'm really curious to hear about your opinion if you need some more convincing why you should visit this island check out my previous video too all right i'm going to wrap up this video right now thank you for watching till the end thank you for checking out this video don't forget to subscribe to my channel high on low tide and check out my other videos about some other nice tropical travel destinations as well. So thank you again, have an awesome day and see you in the next video.